uh, just an opportunity to answer any questions that you might have about the RTM and tell you a little bit about it. I've invited two um, gentlemen that I've worked with for many years in different capacities on the RTM, Craig Amundsen and Steve Rubin, and I thought that they could also help answer questions as they relate to districts and committees. Um, Steve is the Vice Chair of Education and the Secretary of District 3, and Craig is the Vice Chair of Public Works and the Secretary of District 12. Um, District 12 is North Mianus, and District 3 is Chickahominy, so different areas of town. They've both been on for a very long time. They're terrific resources, so I thought that they um, would be great. And Lucy Von Brockel is also here, who represents District 4. And she is um, one of, all three of them actually were district tabulators, which during the era of COVID were the workhorses of the districts to help us keep running. So I thought that Craig and, and Steve uh, with Lucy here, they're great resources to help answer any questions, okay? Um, I've given you each, hopefully you should have it, um, a copy of the RTM petition, which we'll go over, as well as something called the SEEC form, which you also have to complete it's, uh, to make sure that you're not, it declares your candidacy and how you hope to finance your campaign. And then um, a one pager on helpful links. Unfortunately, you know, they're not hot linked on the sheet, obviously, but you can always type it in at home. And there's a wealth of information online. So um, I'm going to give the woman who just walked in a form. Here you go. Sorry. Easy, easy. Get everybody in there. And really, you can petition. jump in at any time and ask a question. I'll just start, and hopefully, you know, in an hour, we'll have answered your questions and recruited some some folks who might want to join. So uh, I'll start with the preamble. The RTM is a representative town meeting is three hundred and. 59 years old. Our first meeting was held in 1664, and that was the traditional New England town meeting, you know, where folks would come, they'd come to their town hall, they'd discuss whatever the matter was, um, and then the, the town would collectively vote on that. And then in 1933, we switched to what we have now, which is the representative town meeting, which is every um, member of the RTM is responsible for about 160 people in town, if you figure there are 230 of us and about 61,000 people. And we have held at that 230 number since 1933. So the structure is there are 12 districts, and they vary in size. The largest is District 8, which is Casca, that has 26 people. And the smallest is Steve's district, which is Chickahominy, and you have how many now? Ten. Ten. So it's, it's uh, determined based on how many folks are in your, your actual district. We are the third largest legislature in the country. Uh, the first is obviously the United States Congress. The second is the New Hampshire State Legislature. And we are third at 230. So um, I think US Congress has like 535 people. New Hampshire has 424, and we have 230. So we're a large uh, organization. We meet eight times a year. Um, we meet in January, the beginning of the term. Then we meet again in March, April, May, June. And then we are off for the summer, and we pick up again in September, October, often November with the election in December. Everybody, all 230, regardless of how, how long you've been on the RTM, everybody's up for re-election every November. So it's like a clean slate for everybody. Every other. I'm sorry? Every other every, November. Every other November. Yeah, sorry. Every term. Every term, everybody's up for re-election. Um, it's nonpartisan, but that does not mean apolitical. Um, and so what nonpartisan means is you do not have to declare a party. You're not a member of a party to run. And when you're listed on the ballot, it doesn't say Democrat or Republican. Um, for the RTM ballot, it's just listed alphabetically by name for however many uh, members or, or candidates are running in that district. Um, 
chairs are not determined. It's not like Congress where, you know, the majority party holds all the chairs and the minority party doesn't. It's none of that. Steve and Craig will talk a little bit about their experience as members of committee and districts in a little bit. Um, and it really is this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful collaborative body where you get to meet your neighbors and friends and help solve problems in the community. I'm just going to go over thumbnail sketch super briefly. I do want to give you a, your packet, though. Um, thanks, Lucy. Um, so some of the things, hey, John. Some of the things that the RTM is responsible for are um, we approve any appropriation that's over $5,000. So if, if um, there's an interim appropriation or appropriation to fix something or buy something or build something over $5,000, we're responsible for that. Um, we can approve, reduce, or eliminate an appropriation. We cannot increase. So if um, somebody wants to build a playground and the cost is $10,000, and the RTM says, mm, we want more than that. We want to increase the budget to 15. We don't have the authority to do that. Only the BET, uh, which is our Board of Estimate and Taxation, can uh, raise the, the, the threshold. We do not have a spending threshold ability to raise. Um, we can approve or reject nominations to town, town bodies, uh, boards and commissions, as made by the selectmen. That's a very important job, actually. I think it's well over 50%, more than that, probably like 75% of our boards and commissions are all uh, positions that the RTM appoints for. So what does that mean? It means like um, your planning and zoning commission, your board of health, um, the board of Nathaniel Witherall, all of those boards and commissions the RTM is, is the authority that says yes or no for those people. And that's, that's a very important job. Um, we can create special committees. If there's a problem we want to address, we have the ability to create a special committee. And we have several standing special committees, labor contracts, which looks at all of our labor contracts for the town, and then the claims committee, which is um, a committee that acts on behalf of the full RTM to settle claims that might be. Uh, related to the town. We can pass uh, what's known as a sense of the meeting resolution, which is a non-binding statement of opinion of, of the body, which says, mm, we want another body to consider this so we don't like it. They're non-bonding. They're, they're just sort of statements of opinion. Um, and then the three big things are uh, we act as the final authority on municipal improvements. So when a building needs to get built, when something needs to get done, you need a municipal improvement, and the RTM is the final authority to approve or deny that municipal improvement. Um, we initiate and pass ordinances, very important. Ordinances are laws. And then perhaps our largest responsibility is in May, we are tasked with the final approval of the annual budget, um, which is hundreds of millions of dollars each year. If you have any questions so far, I know that's sort of a, a lot to digest. But that is sort of gives you an overview of some of our, our jobs, OK? So I said we meet eight times a year. There are 12 districts. And there are various standing committees um, that have special interests. So you have uh, a Parks and Recreation Committee. You have a Health and Human Services Committee. You have a Finance Committee a town services committee, an education committee, a budget overview committee, a legislative and rules committee, a transportation committee. Um, and all of those sort of are very specific to whatever their assigned responsibilities are. It's very nice because it, it's um, quite broad in what it covers. So if you are, have a background in finance, you might be interested in the Finance Committee or the Budget Overview Committee. Or you may say, I don't want to do finance. I want to do something different. I want to do education or health and human services or something. So there's, there are a lot of opportunities um, for people with very diverse backgrounds and skills. And I think that's nice. So 
Each standing committee has 12 people on it, and 12, 12 delegates and 12 alternates, but these guys will talk about that a little bit. Um, and uh, you also have a district meeting. So there are three meetings. There's a committee meeting, a district meeting, and then the full RTM meeting. And the district meeting is with you and your district colleagues. Um, and you generally discuss the call. The call is the agenda. And you go down the list of whatever's being presented that month. And then we all come together at Central Middle School. Um, and then we vote on those things. We discuss them, we debate them, we vote on them. And depending on what the vote is, whatever's being proposed is either passed or it fails. And then we do it all again, you know, the following month or whatever. Any questions so far? No? I thought, I can talk forever, but I don't really want to hear myself talk. So I, I thought it would be nice if, um, I don't know which one of you would like to start. Do you want to go uh, I'll, I'll Sure, yeah. I'll start. So Steve Rubin is going to tell you a little bit about his experience. Well, for me, I've been on the RTM for 10 years. When I joined it 10 years ago, I honestly didn't have a clue in the world what I was getting into there. I had, there were no introductory meetings such as this. A friend of mine who was actually the chair of the finance committee at that time said, Stephen, we really need you. Why don't you, um, why don't you get on here? And I honestly, I mean, I didn't know what the difference between the education committee and the transportation committee or any of these things were. And, and, and I, I suspect that most people in town don't know and they don't really understand what the RTM is involved with. For me, I think the meat of the RTM comes in with the committee meetings. We have the agenda, the call as Alexis referred to it as, and that's where we really discuss the specific items within your area. We debate them, we have experts coming in, and we really know them, and we vote on those items. And then we present those items to the full RTM. So the committee works is where a lot of the really grunt work comes in for the RTM. So I've been on a few committees. I was on a special committee, actually with Alexis, where I was the um, vice chair of the Special Affordable Housing Committee, um, where which everybody knows what a uh, affordable housing, what a um, what a hot topic that is here in town. Um, I was on transportation committee. I was on health and human services, and for almost 10 years I've been on education and as the vice chair of education it's a tremendously rewarding um, position we work almost every meeting the superintendent of the schools is there people from the board of education come and we really get into what's happening with the schools we learn their problems we learn where they need help we go we just debated a few meetings ago about the labor contracts for the teachers and there were some people not on our committee fortunately but there were some people who were against giving the teachers raises and there were others who said yes they're entitled to it at least to meet inflation so that for us was a hot topic right now uh, if you've been following in the papers the hot topics are central middle school and um, old greenwich school we will have we meet with the building committees at almost all of our meetings and they give us a report as to what's going on in their committees and we really have an in-depth viewpoint. So when we present something to the RTM, if something from the financing, for instance, for um, Central Middle School comes to our committee, we can speak intelligently and present it to the full body. And that's, you know, I, like our, I can talk forever and ever. My, wife usually tries to shut me up, but um, but that's sort of like the meat and potatoes of what we do. Um, the meetings, you know, Alexis said we have eight meetings a year. You also have eight committee meetings a year. And those committee meetings will range anywhere, depending on what's on the call, from 30 minutes to three hours. But they're very interesting. I mean, almost everybody looks forward to the committee meetings. And then you have your district meetings, which are usually a few days later, which are 
a little more friendly. You talk to the people in your district, the representatives. Everybody reviews their committees, and they go over their committees. So for me, from education, I'll say, hey, look, we met. We voted 12-0-0 on a fine answer to fund Old Greenwich School. And I'll present it to them as to why, so that when it comes the following week to the big RTM meeting, um, they, they understand the issues somewhat. And that, in a nutshell, you know, is, is my take on everything. I went before most of you came in, we were talking, and I was telling somebody, I said, I've had a, been out of 10 years, and I have sort of a love-hate with this. I mean, you know, it can get a little monotonous when you're at the big meeting and you get 30 different people speaking with 30 different opinions. And some people, you know, you, you, you scratch your head. I probably pulled my hair out. But um, it's like, where are they coming up with that? But it's, it's good because you learn a lot and you hear a lot of opinions and you, you're able to be intelligent enough to cut through the BS and, and vote intelligently. Anyway, that, that's my spiel. If anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. I'll give you an honest evaluation of anything I can. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. Can you talk a little bit about the committees in terms of how people actually get on the committees, the governance of them, you know, how is the chair and the vice chair elected? Sure. Happy to. The, commi <coughs> the committees are selected at the district level. So each district, you know, um, I believe it would probably be in December, will meet. And they'll decide, okay, you know, I mean, our district's somewhat easy on it. And I'll, I'll say, look, I'm education, I want to continue on it. And it's pretty easy. I'm almost a shoe in to, if I win re-election, I'm almost a shoe in to have education again. Some committee, some districts, it becomes a little more competitive, especially the larger districts where there might be 20 individuals and there's 12 things. So you'll present your credentials to the district You'll talk to them. Some people actually go around politicking to the districts and, um, you know, within the district to get their committee. And then the districts will vote on you individually at that December meeting. As far as on the committee level, it's a similar thing, but on the committee level, we'll have a vote. And, you know, if somebody will nominate or self-nominate themselves for this position, then that position, and you'll have a vote to see, um, you know, we've had some very competitive races in education where we've had two or three people running for one position, and then we've had others where it's been um, unanimous consent. So, you know, it depends on the individuals, and it depends on, um, on the situation at the time. Hopefully that answers it for you. Any other questions that I can answer? What's the... And you mentioned somebody was a secretary of a district. So are there officers? What are the officers in each of the districts? Yes. There, there are. And it's basically the same thing. You have a um, chair, vice chair, and secretary. And so these three folks, Lucy, Craig, and Steve, are all, we looked at, they're all the secretaries of their district right now. They're the hardest working members of their, of their officer structure. Well, during COVID, we basically kept the districts running. All, we, we had a crazy system, and, and we could thank Alexis for maintaining this during the height of COVID. But we had all of our meetings via Zoom. And in order to do the votes, the tabulator sent out, let's say we're voting issue one, we'd send out via text all, to all of our members, vote on issue one, yes or no, or abstain. And they would text back to us. And then we'd have to compile it and take a picture of our, of our, test, of our text results and send it to the, town, um, to the town official to compile them all. It was very cumbersome, and, um, you know, and it worked. We, we managed through the height of COVID to maintain a flow. Um, our meetings went very long because of that. Some, some of them went all the way till midnight to one in the morning, but, 
but democracy ruled, so we made it through it. What did you come to? And, and I don't mean to hog it. Please, Craig, Craig, or, Craig is uh, or Lucy, they're both as knowledgeable as I am. Okay. Just um, pull the microphone to you and press the little button so that it'll turn on. Yeah. So are the meetings all in person now, or is there a Zoom option as well? Yeah, so I'll answer that. So we do have an option for Zoom. Um, there are 230 members. In general, about 160, 170 attend in person with about 30 or so that are usually on Zoom. We don't always have 100% attendance, so you know maybe they're like 15 people that might be absent for whatever reason. Um, I recommend strongly that for new folks, you try and give it a try in person because you will meet people that way. It's quite hard uh, when you are participating via Zoom to get a sense of what's going on in the room and just the, the cadence and the temperance of everything. And then, you know, if there's an issue, certainly stay home. You know, if you're sick or something, you can stay home. So you do have that option. But um, the majority of people do participate right now in person, but you do have the option of participating via Zoom. And what, one more uh, um, footnote. The auditorium is central. If you haven't been in there, it's very large. So when we're there in person, we could sit one person every three or four seats. So it's pretty spread out there. So you're not sitting on top of any ne your next door neighbor and getting exposed to whatever, whatever they might have. And what about the district meetings and the committee meetings? Are, they're all in person? They're in person, okay. yeah. Well, they do have a phone in. So. Um, when you are participating in a committee meeting or a district meeting, it's very much like this. Mm -hmm. These are actually the rooms that we use, and the tables may or may not be set up in a square, or rectangle, or whatever. Um, and then what Lucy had, which is that telecom thing that's there, you can dial in. So you have an audio only, no video. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit more challenging to follow along. Um, but. You know, I don't want to talk about that experience. I'm in District 6, which is Old Greenwich, and I think that um, for most of our meetings, there are 20 of us, and maybe there are one or two people on the phone. It could be because they're traveling or there's some issue, but for the most part, people are participating in person. And again, the rooms are quite large and spacious. We usually meet in large public rooms, uh, like a firehouse or... We meet in a cafeteria at a school, so you know you you have enough space to, to spread out if, if it's a concern for you. Yeah. Did you want to answer anything, Craig? Right. No, but I'll, I'll go ahead. Put your microphone on. In terms of voting, when does that take place, and how often? Is it during the meeting when you cast your vote? Yeah. Do you I want to talk about that? that? Yeah. yeah. The voting generally takes place in the committee meetings. Um, so, you know, as Alexis said and Steve talked about, there are 11 standing committees. And when somebody becomes part of the RTN, uh, first off, if I might, my name is Craig Amundsen. Um, and just to kind of give you a little background, um, I'm completing my fourth full term. I actually filled in, I came on the RTN to fill in for a vacancy in 2015. Um, and when we have these meetings and, uh, uh, and things need to be voted on at the committee level, um, I'm on public works committee. That's my assignment from my district. And uh, I was very lucky to be taken under somebody's wing uh, who had been on RTM since I think the Bible was around, you know, and written. Uh, but he took me under his wing and uh, taught me. And I did a lot of shutting up and listening and learning. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. We expect input from everybody, including new people, but I learned by listening. Um, as far as votes, each of the standing committees will be assigned the call, again, is our agenda, and it comes out for every meeting. 
So you get it in advance, you get to look at it and read through and kind of know what the topics are going to be. Uh, that also gives you an opportunity that if you have questions where you don't understand something, you can call one of your district members or committee members and say, hey, you know, I've not done this before and get some input on that. Let's say it happens to be the, uh, a request for additional money for Nathaniel Witherall. That's something that would come into a committee. It would be discussed at the committee level, and then the committee itself would vote yes, no, or abstain on that item at their committee meeting, which is the week prior to the general meeting at Central Middle School. Um, whatever the vote happens to be then gets discussed at each of your respective district meetings. And we go over and we do committee reports and say, this is how we voted, this is why. And those then, that brings up discussions. And you have to remember that the committees, you're going to have 12 members, 12 designa designated people who are from all different sections of town. When you then bring that into your district meeting, which is in your neighborhood, then you're dealing with your neighbors. Okay, these are people that you get to know pretty intimately. Some of them you may know already. Others you'll learn and you'll, and you'll develop relationships there. Um, those votes are then, just as they're reported at the district level, each committee chair reports at the full meeting, which is on the following Monday night, usually. Um, and part of our process is for the committee chairs to come up and give their reports. These are the items, these were our votes. And that then goes into the general section of the meeting, which is when we, as a group, you know, when we vote on something in the committee, that's just in the committee. That then has to be voted on in the general meeting, you know, in front of 230 people with all of the, um, the, the hierarchy, including Alexis and her, her group, uh, plus the people from the town clerk's office. Um, I explain our process to people. I have other, I have relatives who are also involved, like I am, in public legislature. And uh, typically, you know, we are basically what people would normally refer to as being the, the uh, town council. That's what we are. We're the town council of the town of Greenwich. We are the legislative body. Typically, that town council in a town is probably eight to 12 people. When we tell them we're 230, they're like, you're kidding me. <laughs> I do have to tell you also that um, I'm really thankful that you're all showing up here with an interest in becoming part of the RTM. Each one of us comes in with a different outlook on why we want to do this. Sometimes people have special interests that they get involved with the RTM to address. Other times, like myself, um, I, I, I came in with no special interest. I've been in town for 46 years, and I had always kind of had an interest, and as I learned more about what the RTM does and read and got to a point in my career where I could commit this kind of time, I decided to give back to the community. That's my angle on this. So I'm kind of the worst case when it comes to somebody in the legislature because I don't have special interests. I'm not going to vote according to party beliefs. I'm going to vote based on what I think is right or wrong for my immediate community in the district and for the town at large. I hope that answered the question. Segue. Let's just go over some of the forms. That oh, can I can I finish saying what I was going to say? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I ju I was answering a question. Oh, I would like to say something else to you. Sure. And that is again, I really appreciate the fact that you guys have an interest in doing this. This is a big commitment. It's a big time commitment. It's going to be bigger than you think it is. It's going to be more frustrating than you think it is. If you have blood pressure 
problems, address that with your doctor before you get involved because you are going to be frustrated. There are times you're going to want to pull your hair out. I did. <laughs> On the bright side, I think that the majority of the people that do this do it for the right reasons. Um, you're going to meet some just absolutely brilliant, amazing, talented people. You know, when you think about the fact that we've got a budget that is approaching a half a billion dollars, and we have to approve every dollar that this town spends in, in excess of 5000 on anything, that's a huge responsibility. Um, with the system that exists, which again has been 230 people, as Alexis said, since 1933, as cumbersome and awkward and, I don't know, you know, unbelievably large as this body appears to be, we get things done. And we get it done, I think, in a very productive way. That doesn't mean that you're not always going to be happy with the end result. There are plenty of times, you know, you kind of want to, you know, shoot yourself when you get done. And if you've made your best arguments and you, you still can't convince people to look at things the way you are. Not that you're always right. I'm not always right. Um, but I think that people are in this for the right reason. Uh, people like Lucy, Steve, these are, our these are all your neighbors. One of the things you'll develop with this is friends. You're going to develop relationships with people that otherwise you probably would never meet, uh, you know, unless you came to one of the, one of the meetings. Um, I'm personally on the Public Works Committee, and that's my assignment, and it has been since I got involved. Public Works deals with, like it sounds, all the infrastructure stuff for the town from the littlest porta potty out, you know, wherever it happens to be at a construction site to, uh, to the bathrooms at the beaches to the buildings that house the maintenance equipment to the school buildings to town hall. We deal with all of that. We're dealing with the budget having to do with their electricity, their gas usage for their purchase of new vehicles, fire trucks, police cars. This is the kind of stuff we're dealing with all the time. Um, we interact with people throughout the town government. You'll get to know the people that are your elected officials. You are an elected official if you become part of the RTM. Uh, and, you know, it's a little bit different when you, when you say, well, how important can one person be out of 230? And the answer is very important. You're as important as you really want to be. Doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with you, but they'll listen to you. You'll have input. You'll help make hard decisions. Um, you know, Public Works Department was involved when the ceiling collapsed at North Miami School. Thank God it happened on a weekend so that no children were injured. But suddenly we were thrown into a situation where we had to make room. North Mayanus Elementary School is one of the most populated schools in the district, in, the, in, in Greenwich. And we had to figure out how to proceed with not being able to use half the school because of the collapse. Same situation occurred with the, uh, the, the, the flooding at uh, Coscob Elementary. Same situation occurred with the flooding at Greenwich High School. Um, in addition to the 11 uh, uh, committees, each of those committees then has subcommittees that come up generally during budget season, or really if there's anything special that needs to be done, they may appoint a special committee. During budget season, which is probably one of the busiest times for us, um, each member has a subcommittee Remember, trying to break the oversight of the town budget and all the departments into smaller, bite-sized pieces. You know, my subcommittee assignment is the uh, building construction and maintenance department, which is under the Department of Public Works, but they deal with every town building except the schools. 
So when I was talking about the Johns at, at uh, Todd's Point, at Greenwich Point, that's the kind of stuff they're involved with. Um, and our job in that, for the budget process, is to go and meet the department heads of those departments and talk to them about their budgets and then bring that information back to our committees and back to our districts and use that information when we come to approving a budget. The budget meeting is the longest meeting generally. Uh, and we have a number of times gone till 1 o'clock in the morning. When we go that long, we typically say we're going to cut at midnight, but then we take a vote to extend the time. And the idea is if we can do that and get it done before we leave on Monday night, we don't have to come back Tuesday night. If we don't, we have to come back because once the budget is in there, we have to approve it. And if we don't get it approved, it goes into, into effect as is without our, without our input. Um, don't be afraid or think, don't, don't feel this is too daunting a task. There's plenty of room to learn. In a lot of cases, new people, instead of becoming a delegate in one of the uh, standing committees, will become an alternate because that allows them then to come to the meetings with the delegate and learn. Listen, learn, and see how things work. Um, sometimes people become delegates right away, and luckily there's enough other people there to give them guidance. Uh, I love doing this. I drive my wife out of her ever-loving mind, and I enjoy that. Um, my wife is a labor and delivery nurse at Greenwich Hospital and is there 36 years. We've raised three kids in this town, um, and I love Greenwich. This is an opportunity to give back to the town and have some in input for what the, hopefully the next 300 and some odd years is going to be. With that, I'll shut up. Thank you. Well spoken. All right, we can ask some more questions, but let's go through our forms because I think that'll that'll be instructive for you. Um, let's start with the petition. As a new member, anyone who would like to join the RPM needs to complete this petition. So I've attached a copy of it here with uh, for for you. You're going to want to fill out your name. Um, at the top, and you need to have 25 ink signatures, which just means the person actually has to sign the form. You know, you can't uh, have a photocopy or something like that in there. It's super easy to get them. You can just go to your neighbors. If you're a member of a church or a synagogue or something, you can go there, as long as the person's a Greenwich uh, resident. They just have to be um, a Greenwich resident, and they also have to be within your district. So, if, if like, I live in Old Greenwich, if I were petitioning, um, you might go to the grocery store and stand outside and say, are you from Old Greenwich? And if so, they can sign your petition. Um, it's very easy to get 25 signatures. You can just go up and down your block. Can I add it? Oh, absolutely. Lucy, phone wrong. Yeah. I went to my district meeting in September okay. and brought my, my petition and everyone in the district because everyone encourages people to join the RTM who's already on the RTM. Okay. Everyone signed it. I was done in a night. Right. Um, it was easy peasy, and I learned what the district meetings were like. Yeah. Good, good. So you can do that, except the deadline is the 15th, oh, right. and the meetings are the 14th this year. So that's cutting it kind of close. Um, but yes, that is a very good way to do it. They need to be registered voters? Yes, they have to be. Yep, we're going to get to that. So they have to be within your district, and they have to be registered voters. So, uh, that was my question. Can you give me a first to find out? So no, what I would, what I always recommend people do is, if it says collect 25, get 40. Assume that there might be some percentage of people who think they're registered, they are not registered, and just get more than the bare minimum. Now, if you know that, let's say you and your family has four people that are indeed registered, and you can sort of go down your block and confirm that you know people well enough, that's okay. But I always recommend getting more than the bare minimum. Because without the bare minimum, your petition won't be accepted and then you can't throw it out. Hey, you can look up online if someone registered, right? It's publicly um, available information. I don't know if, if uh, I'm pretty sure it is. I've seen that. Can, but the town clerk, the way it works is after you present your petition, um, 
they will go through each signature, uh, each each candidate, and confirm. Does somebody you know? Can. It's, it's publicly available. I, I was just confirming if you knew how to get to it because I know it's on the I, internet. I've never done it that way, but I, so okay. I want to say yes or no. This is it's more efficient. Make sure right? you get enough. Yeah. Yeah. And you can sign for yourself. Oh, absolutely. Sure. And then someone doesn't have to have not signed for someone else for them to sign for you. So if like my neighbor's doing this and they ask them, it doesn't matter. It's not exclusive just to one person. No, 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 no. You can oh, you have can as have many people. Yeah, I mean you could have so, a signing yeah. party. You know, just make sure. <laughs> yeah. I would never just put twenty-five down. Yeah. I always go a little bit, but that's just. Me. Please. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? Have any questions about the petition? And current members, I curiously have to get on the ballot each time? Yes, so only if you have failed to meet um, a minimum attendance requirement. Mm. So in this particular case, um, you have to attend two-thirds of a full meeting and your district meetings in order to automatically be considered. We had an extra meeting in 2022, so uh, normally you'd have to attend nine, um, minimum of nine, this time you had to uh, minimum of 10 meetings in, in that time. So there, can I make one comment? Sure. The, uh, I'm sorry. Where was I going to go with that? Never mind. Okay. I'll so let's just review. The petition is due on September 16th at 4 p.m. in the town clerk's office. You can take Lucy's advice and try and go to your district meeting. Most of them meet on the 14th. So you could certainly do that, but just make sure you get it in by the 15th at the town clerk's office with a few extra signatures. Um, this next form is also important. You have to submit it with your petition. This is an SEEC form. And basically what that is, is it says, how are you going to fund your campaign, right? Now, this is a form used for any state official. So obviously, if you're running for a higher office, you might be spending campaign money. I'm not going to tell you how to fill it out. You're going to read it and figure out what um, threshold is most likely for your campaign. However, I can tell you what I have historically done for the last 19 years, which is um, I fill out B, which is I'm funding my campaign directly out of my own personal funds and will not uh, exceed expenditures of $1,000. And you say, well, why $1,000? Because sometimes you make little cards, you know. I, I um, have a very large dog, and I made tons of cards, and I posted them to this little doggy jacket in November, and we sat out at the, at the polls and handed out cards with my dog, and somebody might say, oh my god, you know. How did you get those cards? Well, you had to pay for them, right? So they weren't $1,000, they were like $50 at Staples, but if somebody audited me, I have checked off $1,000 or something. Um, you can also say, I do not to, uh, intend to receive or expend in excess of 1000 or I do not intend to expend any funds at all, right? So it's completely your choice how you decide to do that, but just make sure you turn it in. They should go hand in hand. And then this other one, um, it has the meeting dates for September for the districts. Most of our districts meet on Thursday, but there are three that meet on, on uh, Wednesday. And it tells you the location. So I do recommend that if you're interested, you go and check them out. Like, figure out where your district is and just go and introduce yourself. You can do a signing party, like Lucy said. But also you get a flavor of, of, of what's going to happen. Um, and then I'm just going to go through some of the links with you. If you just type in GreenwichCT.org RPM, it pulls you right up to the RPM website. It's easy. It has tons of information on there. It has where all the meetings are. You can look at all the agendas, the calls from the current meeting, from past meetings. You can noodle around and see links to videos. It's just a great resource. So familiarize yourself with that. Um, all of our meetings, our, our full meetings are posted on GCTV. You know, that's our channel 79. There's a link here you'll see to our YouTube station. And you can, again, just, you know, I think you go back to um, 19, 
We all look much younger and thinner. That's what I'm always like struck by whenever I go way back in the way back time machine. Um, so that's you know it's just a great way to, to sort of see what you're about to get into. Um, and then uh, also this has the petition online and the SEC online. So just take a look at that, and they're just great resources. Um, I hope you will all consider running. It really is a wonderful organization. Um, let's talk, I just want to talk super briefly about the time commitment. So there are three meetings. Um, the district and the committee meetings, I think Megan and Steve gave you a very good overview of, they tend to be shorter, right? They're, they're just shorter. Like, um, you know, I would say, not all the time, but maybe, oof, maybe about an hour, hour and a half, two hours, that's sort of it. You know, it really is a function of how many items you're discussing and to, to what extent. Um, and there are some committees that have very few items assigned to them, and so they don't meet as frequently. And then we get to the big meeting, which is the full RTM meeting. We start at 8 o'clock. And I would say um, that we're usually done by 11. Uh, they can go longer, and they can go shorter, but... Um, I would say 11, 11, 15 is sort of a, a fair estimate. Um, they're in the evening, so if you have child care issues, you're going to want to make sure you've got that buttoned up. Um, but again, it's, it's eight times a year, so it's not every month. It's not every week of um, every month. And I think Craig had a, a good point, which is if you're a little bit compressed for time, starting off as an alternate to a district gives you a little bit more flexibility. Um, in some districts, they're much larger than the number of, of spots available, so it gives you a, a, a little bit more time to learn. In Steve's district, <laughs> where they only have 10 people and they're like 12 committees, everybody has to step up. Otherwise, uh, you, won't have, you won't have enough coverage. But Yeah, so... Um, an alternate can vote if the delegate is not present. But if the delegate is present, then generally it's the delegate that votes. Although if, if, um, if neither a delegate or an alternate are present at the meeting and another member from that district is present at the meeting, they can vote on behalf of their district. The um, committee meeting votes are advisory only. They're not binding. The only action that the RTM takes that's binding is what occurs at the full meeting. Alexis, um, can I make a comment? Sure. Put your little button on there. I remember, remembered what I was going to say, which is, you know, when you're talking about uh, doing your petitions, um, the League of Women Voters usually, well, every election produces a guide that takes you through who's on the ballot. And that includes RTM members. Uh, most of us submit uh, a bio uh, for who we are and why we're trying to do this. Uh, includes your photograph usually. Not everybody participates in that, which is, you know, that's a personal choice. But one of the things that I think is important to voters to know and would be important for you to know, first off, not everybody that runs for RTM is going to get on RTM. If it happens to be a competitive district, uh, you know, you can have 35 people running for 24 seats, um, in which case somebody's not going to get to continue. At times, we have had kind of political waves come through and knock out some more seasoned, older guard people and bring in new people, and that just happens. And, you know, as competitive as it can be and as contentious as it may seem at times, when we walk out of the meetings, we're all friends and neighbors. And hopefully that's the way most people operate. But when you see that voter's guide, it'll show you who the individual is that's running, and you'll be on there if you've petitioned to be on the ballot. And it'll say either that you're an incumbent or you're a P petition, new, which you would be, 
or P petition, which means that's somebody that served previously and didn't make enough meetings to automatically be on the ballot. Okay, so that's important, you know, for coming in because, in my view, if you're not, unless there are ex extenuating circumstances for not showing up, if you're going to volunteer to do this, you show up. I don't, aside from being, at times being in the hospital, I don't think I've missed more than two meetings throughout the time that I've been involved. And I think you'll find that a lot. You'll, you'll hear people that come up, have served in this body for over 50 years. Okay, some of them without ever missing a meeting. Okay, so that's the one thing about the petition thing. Um, you know, again, give it a shot. Come, come and in the event that you are not elected, don't walk away thinking that's the end of the deal. Very often, somebody ends up moving, somebody becomes ill, and there end up being openings at various districts. Those openings are generally put into one of the local newspapers, either in the Greenwich Time or the Greenwich Free Press or the Greenwich Patch. It'll say there's an opening in District 4. Um, if that's the case and you didn't get on during the election, talk to your district chairperson and tell them, I'd still be interested. And if an opening happens, go in and put your name in, throw your hat in and see if you get on that way. That's it. I'll add a footnote to that. About 25 years ago, I ran in Old Greenwich um, very hesitantly about running, and, um, and I lost. And there were probably, how many people were in Old Greenwich? Uh, 20. 20. There were probably 30 people running. Well, the footnote to that is 10 years later, 15 years later, here I am serving 10 years <laughs> on the RTM. So if it happens that you're in a competitive one, don't be discouraged about it. So, and I, I just think this is important because sometimes when you run and you get to the meetings, the, uh, they're formal. So they are run under the rubric of Robert's rules, which takes a little bit of getting used to. So, you know, you uh, refer to people as chairman or madam moderator. It's not Steve and Craig. It is a very formal, structured environment. Um, so, you know, you make a motion, the motion has to be seconded. Um, is there any objection? The A, the I's, the nays, it's a, it's a very prescriptive formula and we don't deviate from that. So some people might say, well, I, I don't like this rule or why do we do it that way? It doesn't matter. You know, we, we, we work under Robert's rules. It's very formal. Um, there are ways that you can object to something um, you can't shout from the floor and make ad hominem attacks. That's a big no-no. So I think that one of the things that happens is, is that when you come in, if you've ever gone to like a PTA meeting or uh, a meeting at an organization that you might be part of, it might be a little bit more loosey-goosey. No, it's very formal. You aren't acknowledged until you're recognized by the chair. Um, if you are in any way um, out of order, you'll be called out of order. And that just takes a little bit of getting used to. So just to prep you, you know, <laughs> if you come, <laughs> it, is, it is somewhat formal. Um, I think it's great, and I happen to love it because I'm the one doing the rules. So <laughs> it's sort of in my wheelhouse. But uh, it can take a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to somebody being like, Madam Moderator you know, chairman, sir, you know, it, it, you just have to get used to that different framework. It's sort of a mind shift, but I think you'll like it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, campaigning comes up a lot when I talk to people about the RTM and people are intimidated by that. Not every district is competitive. Not every year is competitive. I think the last time around, we had a lot of districts that had vacancies after the election. We didn't have enough people to fill the seats, so everybody got on. 
Um, in my district, I've never had a competitive race, um, but in some districts it is competitive and people do different things. Um, but going to the polls and talking to people uh, that day is something that people commonly do. Um, getting to know your neighbors, getting your name out there, using your email list, whatever it is. Um, in my district, we had a new person. Someone from another district told them it was very competitive. They got a lawn sign. They got the most votes in the district. Interesting, but she was she got on anyway because we didn't have enough people running. Um, so you know, one good thing to do is you can check um, the uh, the tallies of the elections on the voters the registrar of voters page. Um, and see what your district's like. Some districts will, you know, you'll see that a lot of people didn't get on. Some districts will see that they're always right in candidates, so. Sometimes, it actually. I actually find it very pleasant. You know, you go to your polling location, you meet some neighbors, they always have Girl Scout cookies out, at least in Old Greenwich they do, so you get, you get some, you know, some snacks. I bring my dog, he's very sweet. I think that helps, you know, things like that. So I, I think, you know, Make a good effort, enjoy it. It's a great way to get involved in your community. It really, really, really is. And you meet some of the nicest people. I mean, I have had the good fortune to meet some of my, um, some of my loveliest friends and all ages. Like, you know, uh, my mentor is like 90, right? So, I mean, I, I have, I've had a, a great experience meeting a wide range of people from all walks of of, of town and background, and it's a great way to get involved, so I hope you will consider it. Yes? So, so you're allowed to campaign? You oh, absolutely. Do postcard, whatever, not postcards. Yes. But, oh, okay, I didn't thought there was some Yeah, no, no. Right. So, um, when I first joined 19 years ago, my son was one, I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old, and I went to my little nursery school, and I made up little cards, because who really knows you? And you said, you know, your name and your interests and like that. And then I remember sending out emails to everybody I knew, which was like 10 people because I had just moved here and I didn't know a whole lot of people. And, you know, you just sort of, you sort of get it out there. And so, you know, if you um, are in some group in your community, your neighborhood association, maybe just send out a little e-blast. Some people put it on, uh, our neighborhood has a WhatsApp thing, like a little chat group. You can put it on there too, you know. However you want to communicate. My other question is, um, I, I go by a name that is not my legal name, or my vote, so people won't know necessarily. So we do have folks that do that. Um, so You might see the ballot and go, who's that? When you appear on the ballot, you, your name will appear as it appears as the registrar of voters. Some people might put, um, like, Elizabeth parentheses, Betsy Smith or something like that. And I think that they can uh, put the little quotation mark with your nickname in it. I would ask the town clerk. But your, how it appears on the ballot is typically how uh, it, you get as a registrar of voters. So I would just check. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very much for coming. I know it's hard at the end of uh, August and on a sort of a rainy day, but I look forward to seeing you all in <laughs> January uh, at the induction of our next class of RTM representatives. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.